Oh, hey, Quinn wants to say hi. Come on. <sighs> say hi. Hi. <laughs> How are you? How are you? Quinn, girl, stop. Say, how are you? How are you? Very good. How are you? You got a drink there? <laughs> <laughs> Isaac, come say hi. One second. Let me have Isaac to say hi. Okay. You ready? Ooh, you're big. Yeah. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Say hi. Hi. How are you, sir? How are you, sir? I'm great. How are you? Good. That's very good. Anything else, Isaac? Mm -hmm. How was your day? Good. Anything exciting? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> well, that's it. Short and sweet. Here today with uh, Glenn Lubin. Glenn, why don't you go ahead and tell some tell the people here a little bit about yourself, who you are, and and uh, what it is that you do. Okay, very good. Well, first of all, thanks for having me here, uh, Mike. Um, my name is Glenn Lubin. I'm with Goosehead Insurance. I'm the agency owner. Um, my goal when I'm connected with clients is always to help them, you know, save and make money on their home and auto insurance. So we're a broker. We take care of clients and that's what we do. Awesome. So how did you get into, we met in a different career path. So how did you get into doing insurance? Oh man. Uh, you know what? Uh, you know, my, when I first got started, my mom used to tell me to go ahead and make the payment for her insurance. Mm -hmm. uh, so I had to go down the street to a local state farm agent. And um, every time that I would go in and make a payment, I would talk to the manager and, you know, I got to know them and all their, the whole team over there. And, uh, you know, little by little, she actually asked me, Hey, um, would you like to work here? And I'm like, no way, man, you guys don't get paid as much as I do. As an 18 year old, I was working at the warehouse somewhere, um, a Frito-Lay. And, uh, she asked me to switch gears at the time I was in a mentorship program and they said, Hey, this is a really good thing to do. It'll be an office job, nine to five, all this kind of stuff. And I was like, you know what? I'll try it. So I ended up leaving my uh, Frito-Lay warehouse job labor and then switching gears to the state farm as like the entry level data entry clerk. And uh, here I am fast forward as an agency owner. So you never had, I mean, when you were a kid, you were not thinking, okay, this is what I'm going to do. And then you, you ended up making it a career. How did you switch from career to business owner? Oh, you know what? Um, I guess I got, so, so really when I was working at State Farm, I got really, really good at my job. Um, I kept getting promotions from the data entry, um, the claims, because that was back in 2005 when all those hurricanes happened. So I have like a unique starting because I kind of got hazed into the business. Okay. So everybody was coming in, hey, insurance claim, file, file. And, you know, all my other coworkers at the time was like, oh, my God, it's hectic. And I'm like, this is normal to me. You know what I mean? So um, I went from there. I uh, got into uh, like a receptionist role. Then I ended up doing um, sales, sales and marketing. I left and worked for the bank for about three or five years. Okay. And then I switched gears back as the manager and I wrapped up as a management. And I was like, you know what? I'm really doing well in helping this agent grow his business. Uh, let me go ahead and do this by myself. And we switched gears and that was just the beginning. Mm -hmm. So that must have been pretty, uh, I don't know, exciting, but also that there was, was there hesitation at all? Or you just knew, okay, I can, I can, I know, I know the product. I know I can do this. And, and I just go with it? Or did you look at it and go, okay, well, you know what? I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if it's really good. Like how long did it take you to go, when you, when you made the decision that you could do it on your own, how long did that take from that decision to actually doing it? Well, just like you always hear on all these types of books and, you know, seminars that you'll go to or whatever type of motivational thing, they talk about the hardest part is just taking that first step and figuring out, hey, this is what I want to do. And then finally, when I decided, hey, I want to go ahead and be an agency owner, um, the real hardest part was figuring out on what capacity, because there's a couple of different types of agents. And um, I decided to go down the broker route, and it, it was a, a simple change. But to say simple and easy is two different things, right? Um, it was very hard. It was a mix of emotions when it came to, you know, excitement and being absolutely terrified, you know? so just to be transparent, but um, it was a wild ride. Inspiration. Did you pull inspiration from any 
any one person or was it just a collective group of people? Was it a book that you read? I mean, you kind of touched on that about, you know, the different books that you read. What made you go, or, or was there someone that, that basically said, okay, well, they did it, I can do it, or I want to be like that person? I guess I started off with um, just kind of knowing your why and what you're doing, right? Um, once I figured out that, hey, I want to live a life like no one else does, you know what I mean? I have to do something completely different. And in the insurance industry, the hardest part is the first three to five years. And if you can get through that, you can really get through anything. So um, to answer your question, where I draw inspiration from is a series of motivational and leadership books, time management books, and just whatever you're going through right then and there, just get a book that's, you know, that has the right information in there that you need that you can apply instead of just reading and it just being a concept and you applying it. Like right now I'm reading a book called Extreme Ownership and um, it's a phenomenal book. And it just talks about how, regardless what's going on, you control basically two things, your actions and your attitude. And keep remembering that. Regardless what happens, you control those two things and what type of actions you need to take to grow the bottom line, help your customers, and um, represent the carriers properly. So where do you see yourself going now? Uh, you've, you, you've worked on becoming the broker. You, you got through your three to um, five years. Uh, at least in, in insurance and trying to get through the hard part, so to speak. Now you're a broker. What's the next step? Are you, uh, are you content where you're at or do you see this going into something else or do you see yourself switching paths down the road? Oh no, I'm, I'm a career guy. You know, I either retire or I die from this, you know what I mean? I'm never letting go of it. But um, really from here, uh, I'm actually in the process now. I'm so grateful and happy that I'm able to even say this or be part of this, but I'm actually starting to interview now for my first like sales agent in my office or marketing representative in my office. So um, we're going through the process of hiring our first team member. And um, you know what? I don't, I don't ever see it really stopping. You know, we're just going to continue to, I, I wouldn't mind having a, a 15, 20 person team and just, you know, as a licensed sales agent. And then, of course, you know, supporting staff around that. Uh, what are some things that you might see that, that holds people back that maybe prevents them from getting their full potential, you know, both in business and maybe specifically in the insurance industry? Well, uh, well, actually, uh, we're going to go a little bit different on that one question. I like that one. Um, I feel like people need to understand to separate the two. I mean, I know that people say, hey, it's always good to, you know, merge that. But it's, it's also important for your mental health for you to have a personal life outside of your business. Mm -hmm. So, um, so, cause a lot of people blend those two together and then it just can potentially cause havoc later on. Cause now it can actually even be something bigger that you can't be investing time into your family, you know, and then your kids need you. Like, let's say if I'm on the phone with a customer and uh, my son or my daughter comes in the, the office, I'm going to stop my phone call and I'm going to tell my kid, Hey, look, what you're telling me is important and I love you. Um, but allow me to finish up this phone call and I'm gonna get back to you because you're the most important thing in my life. I know it sounds super cheesy and just like a lot to say, but that's important for their psyche. Cause I have a five and a three year old and um, this is when their brain is really just growing and developing. I don't want them thinking that daddy's always kicking them out when they want to talk to me. You know what I mean? So. And I yeah. think, um, for people that I know in my life, I think one of the things that always amazed me about you is your ability to give the individual attention. When someone is talking, you focus right in on them. And you're not okay. doing it to like, hey, they need me to focus on them, so I'm focusing on them. It's, it's very genuine. And I think that is a, a really um, amazing trait that you have to be able to, to do that, which is probably why you're, you've done so well, because you, you, when you focus on people, you know, what's the, what's the old phrase that uh, people don't uh, care what you know until they know how much you care? Absolutely. That, this business is exactly that, okay. you know? It's exactly that. But thank you for that. I really appreciate that. I mean, you know, uh, I, I kind of say that that's kind of who I am, mm -hmm. but um, being in the insurance industry and kind of a, uh, having those conversations, those, those closed door conversations with uh, high end leadership and, uh, and, or any executive level, you understand how important that truly is that whoever you're talking to 
it's it's me and you like this is me and you you know what i mean so anyway and then everybody else on your your, your channel so <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> But, yeah, but it, it works everywhere. I've seen it. I've seen you do it in groups of people, and there's there's tons of people there. But you're focusing on the person that is talking or or that has asked for your attention, basically, and you are are giving it 100. That that's just I think a really um, that's a difficult trait to learn. You kind of just have it. You can learn it, but it's it's very difficult to. It just has to be more built into you for it to be natural. Got it. Got it. Well, cool. Well, great. Thanks for saying that. Appreciate it. <laughs> so let me ask you this. Uh, uh, there are people who are realistic, which sometimes means that their glass is half empty and they just think they're realistic. For people who are trying to obtain actual goals or do things in business, can a person be a true realistic person, but then also obtain goals or, or get, to that, get to that level? Or do they have to take risks and they have to do things that maybe aren't realistic in order to get where they need to be? You know, I feel as if that a person really should take calculated risks in everything that they're doing. And don't forget to have fun, because if you're not having fun, you won't be doing it long. You know, so I, that would be the most succinct way of answering that question is that, yeah, it could be it's great to be positive. It's great to be if you're a positive person, half glass, half full, or if you're, you know, on the other side of it and, you know, glass half empty. You know, to be honest, both are important. Uh, something that we we're talking about a little bit before on the show is just about being even in what you're doing. You know, you can't be too excited. You can't be too mellow, just be even keel between the two. So I feel like just understanding that there's gonna be highs and lows and to continue to keep the end in mind and have that vision. And you know what, have big goals, have God-sized goals, you know, and sit back and see what happens, but just make sure you take that action. So I guess don't sit back, take action. When people look at you and they see your success, What's something that people probably ask you most of the time? And then really, what's the question they should be asking you? So a lot of people think it's very easy. Mm -hmm. And I don't think, uh, hmm. it's not that something is, well, when you do something consistently all the time, um, and if you're really wanting to be a consummate professional and you want to dial in and make it better, you know, that means that you're putting in that work after hours. So that means that you're going through different role plays on how to say something, how to properly communicate something. Uh, this is perfect. I have a Van Gogh picture right here um, in my home. And um, I always say that when you're selling an intangible product, that you need to paint, you need to paint pictures with your words. And if you're not really that thought provoking, or if you're not really capturing that idea and painting that picture in someone's head, you're not really connecting, you know what I mean? So uh, I say that really, you just gotta put the work in and practice and do role plays, even though it sounds stupid, you know, go in front of the mirror and, you know, say a certain thing. If you're a face-to-face -face with customer interaction, see how you look, see how your body language is, um, what your body language is telling you or telling that person. Because you want to make sure that you drive that, that core, you know, reasoning or that core, you know, objective to that client. So they'll know, hey, um, either this product is going to help you do this or this service will help you do this. And um, it's the best for you. Uh, but you can't ever get to that step in the conversation if you don't know who the hell you're talking to. Right. So if you don't, so, okay, one of the biggest things that I gets under my skin when, when clients or when sales agents are talking to clients is that they don't slow down enough to ask questions about the client, mm -hmm. get to know the client and who they are and what's important to them. Mm -hmm. And then of course, find a solution to fit that need instead right. of trying to jam a product down someone's throat. A lot of agents that come into the insurance business think, oh, hey, I'm going to sell this life insurance policy. You need this. You need $500,000. You need $3 million of, of life insurance. Um, for you and your family. Do you love your family? What? No, that's not the questions. You need to ask, A, do they have life insurance? And if you do, how much is it? Do you need more? Do we need to supplement? Um, what's important to you? What's your end goal? You know, and also figure out like what age they're in. Are they in the wealth accumulation phase of their life? Or if they're in the, the, the winter years of their life, are they looking to more 
leave a legacy for their family through insurance products. I mean, there's so much that you can get from uh, by just asking those open-ended questions to your clients. And then you go in your arsenal of products and services to see what can fit them the best. Um, a lot of agents just don't slow down enough to just ask those questions to understand them. But that's a long way of answering that, but it's, um, it needed to be said because it's something that I see all the time. I think that, so my background is hospitality and uh, I was a concierge for about a decade and it's very similar job or very uh, dis, uh, different jobs, but similar in the thought process is I'm trying to create the best experience for you. Now I know what I like. And I know it would be a great experience for me to go out on the night, but that's not, it's not about me. It's about you and figuring out what you like. And so I have to listen to what you say. So that way I know I've sent you to the right restaurant. I send you to the right, uh, you know, bar or send you to the right, uh, nightclub, whatever it might be. Um, there is a, there's the golden rule, which we all know, which is do unto others as you would want done to you. And that's a great step, a starting point for kids. But I think when you're in business, the platinum rule is the best rule, which is do unto other or, or do do to others as they would want done to them. I might yes, have done a little wrong, but basically, you do what they want you to do, not what you would want done for yourself. And I think right. that happens a lot of time. And it sounds like very similar because I had a similar uh, situations with different people that I worked with. I remember one particular concierge was trying to help somebody. A person came and wanted this really nice restaurant. And they said, "Well, that's a, that's that's pretty expensive. It's you know you're gonna you're gonna spend way too much money going there." But they didn't ask you that. You know, mm. they're, they're spending five hundred dollars a night to stay at this hotel. Price is not what they're worried about. What they're worried about is experience. Now you can't afford to stay at a five hundred dollar night hotel, and that's just the that's just the case at this moment. I mean, maybe on later on the road it will change, but just saying that you shouldn't uh, go because it's expensive. Well, that's not, you're not looking at from that person's perspective. Correct, correct, correct. It's not about you. Mm -hmm. Take yourself out of the equation. You know, it's about the client. Mm -hmm. You know, let's, let's make sure that, you know, whatever their, their thing is, we help them get that. Right. <laughs> Sales is not hard. It's about, <laughs> you know, finding a solution. Yeah. So anything you'd want to uh, maybe add or, or tell people or something that might be a good... Um, a piece of knowledge for people to know? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, it's, this is really when shopping for insurance, especially homeowners insurance. Um, it's very important that you know the type of agent that you're working with. There's two types of agents. Two, 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 right? Let me see if I can pull it. Okay, there we go. There's two types of agents. There's one agent that's a captive agent, and then there's one agent that's a broker. Now, with the captive agent, that means that they only represent one company. Their rules, they know their underwriting, they know everything about that one company. But then there's the broker that has access to dozens of carriers, which is what Goosehead does. Um, that's the reason why I selected this um, franchise is because we give our clients the power of choice. Mm -hmm. The choice of, hey, um, you know, if this carrier connects with them properly, is, um, is the pricing specifically competitive to them it you know we can tailor a solution specific to that customer without having to think of hey just that one carrier's mentality on something so the benefit of working with a captive agent is what i'm kind of getting down to is that um you have access to all these carriers and making sure that you, you know we can see who can give us the best price who can give us the best coverage and you know present that solution to the customer and now you know in the heart of hearts that you know you shopped all this entire market and this is for you, client. Mm -hmm. You know, because I know that price is good, coverage is great, and you're going to get phenomenal service with us um, because with Goosehead, um, we have something called NPS. And our NPS is, uh, last time I checked, was um, above 88%. Um, and just the national average, I think it's like 40-something like like industry average, and we're double the national average. And that's surpassing, you know, uh, Ritz Carlton, AAA, all these different types of big name companies. We have that, um, you know, that customer satisfaction scoring. So not only are we 
providing a great pr a service through the insurance, but we're also, ex you know, sharing a great customer experience uh, with our agency. So these are things that our clients are entitled to. We make sure that they get that because they deserve it. Uh, lastly, uh, two questions. One okay. is how can people find you? How can people get more information if they, if they want to look into your services, if they want to be able to contact you about certain things? Um, is there a certain type of clientele that you're looking for? And most importantly, where did the name Goosehead come from? <laughs> well, Goosehead, to answer the second question, Goosehead came from uh, Mark Jones. He's the, the owner. And then, of course, they opened up the distribution channel through Franchise. And uh, I think the name came from his granddaughter. So that's, that's, that's that. Um, and uh, how can people get in contact with us? Well, great. Um, you can reach me. Um, my number, direct number here is 321-418-6051. Um, our social handles on Instagram and Facebook is Insured by Glenn. And you could also go to my website, insuredbyglenn.com. Now, uh, that's my personal website. You can also go through the franchises version of it. If you just type in Goosehead Glenn Lubin, and you'll be able to see that specifically right there. But um, that's my contact information. And um, so uh, my wheelhouse is um, homeowners insurance because there's too many people out there that are spending way too much money for homeowners insurance and they don't even know. Actually, right before I got on the phone with you, there was a client that was referred to us. She was, the, the cost was 1609 is what she's currently paying for homeowners insurance. And while I was on the phone with her, I reshopped the insurance for her and it went down to $816. Same product, <laughs> same product, <laughs> but different carrier gave her a lot better um, policy and even better, her deductible was 2% for hurricane. I brought it down to 500. Wow. Phenomenal, that's <laughs> half. Yeah. That's half the price, more coverage, and that's because that carrier wants that type of customer. Okay, I'm gonna get back in insurance, okay? <laughs> so each carrier has their appetite on what they like. Okay. You know, if they know that this person is um, in this area, in this demographic, and um, they're whatever, you know, that they like that customer. Their insurance score is awesome, they want them. So what they're gonna do is that they're gonna give you a better price where you can switch gears. If an insurance carrier company is saying, hey, look, they're increasing the price on you, well, either they don't really want that type of business anymore, or they're gonna non-renew you. If you stay there it, and it's been just because of loyalty, you, you're kind of digging yourself in a hole. That's why you should shop your insurance all the time. Call us. We'll, and if you know what, if, if you client or a new person that's on this uh, podcast right now, if you want to reach out to our office and we'll go ahead and run a customized, tailored, succinct quote for you and your family um, to make sure you guys get the best price without sacrificing coverage. That's great. And then I think that's, uh, that's tough. People are always worried about talking to someone in the insurance field because they don't want to be sold something just because somebody wants to sell them something. And, um, you know, people who know some of the industry can have that conversation, but if they know the industry, they probably also know what plans they should have. It's the people who don't know. And uh, I think this is going to help people because they'll get a little bit of information. They'll know a little bit of the nuggets that you gave and uh, it might make them uh, a little bit easier to, it might make it easier for them to be able to kind of shop around. But uh, if they're watching this, they should contact you <laughs> right. and have that conversation. Yeah. Now, you only deal with uh, folks in the Orlando area, Florida, or is there anywhere else? Well, we're licensed throughout the entire state of Florida, okay. um, but I also have my agency partners throughout the U.S. Okay. So wherever someone's at, we can take care of you if Goosehead has that footprint in that area. Oh, there's clients that call me sometime and um, they might have a really good policy. And I reviewed it and my policy is higher. Well, I'll straight up tell you, hey, look, um, you're good where you're at. There's no need to switch. You know, I'll give you a call next year and take a look to see if I can get you a better deal at that time. But in the meanwhile, hey, stay connected with us on our, in uh, on our socials. And, you know, if I ever have an event that's locally, man, I would love to see you out there because no now is not no forever, and I'm in this game for the long haul. All right, Glenn, thanks so much. Appreciate you joining the podcast. Appreciate you uh, um, 
find the time. I know you're busy, so I appreciate you uh, carving out some time to be able to have this conversation with everyone. Oh, no doubt, man. I, I appreciate you for reaching out to me and um, telling me about this. And uh, I feel a lot of people need to know this. And um, what you're doing is huge. I appreciate you for doing this and uh, you know adding value to the community. So, man, um, I hope we stay connected for sure. Oh, yeah, definitely. All right, Glenn. Thanks so much. Very good.